Now it's time to welcome my good friend, Michael Easton, founder of Fellowship Financial Group, a retirement income store based just outside of Orlando, Florida. He's also Amazon's best-selling author of Common Sense Income Strategies. Michael, thanks so much for being here on the show today. It's always a pleasure, Dave. Thanks for having me. Hey, so have you had clients that you recall who personally, sadly, got scammed by scammers over the telephone or in the mail that you could recall? You know, there are a couple of things that, that we've seen in terms of the scams. One, uh, one has been through the IRS. So a lot of folks have gotten their identity stolen through the IRS. So as a result, you know, they end up having to file paper um, instead of doing electronically. Uh, we've had a couple of attempts, uh, but fortunately, um, most of our clients are, are educated in that regard because there's so many things that are going on. So with the, with the IRS, they weren't really being scammed. Essentially, the IRS got scammed because somehow the return got hacked and, and now you have to put a special, uh, I guess, four-digit number, like six-digit yeah. number there. I know I have to do that on my return too or they won't accept it. Um, and usually, isn't that usually where somebody tries to get in and tries to claim a refund before you've actually filed? Isn't that the most typical strategy? It is actually, yeah. Of course, if the IRS does send the check to the scammer and then you file subsequently, they still have to give you your refund if you're owed, correct? That's right. Yeah. But it takes a lot longer. You know, there's a lot more paperwork that's involved and nobody likes to deal with the IRS. Uh, so it's a, it's a big hassle. Absolutely. So 45 seconds in this segment here, you know, what do you, so if you had a good track record with your clients not being scammed with IRS or, or, or social security telephone scams, what do you tell your clients to help them so they can keep their guard up and be protected? Well, look, I mean, you're dealing with seniors, baby boomers. A lot of them tend not to be so tech savvy and a lot of them are too trusting. That's like a perfect storm. So I tell people all the time, question everything. Don't be afraid to ask questions because these scammers are becoming very, very sophisticated. I mean, they're changing all the time and you've got to be on the alert for them. I mean, you might get a phone call where the caller ID shows up as your bank and the phone number that shows up is your bank's phone number. So you may not be suspect of that. And that's where you have to ask questions, question everything. They can be convincing. They can be very convincing. Michael, stay with us. We need to take a quick commercial break. You stay with us, too. We'll be right back here with more from Michael Easton on the Income Generation. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Income Generation. I'm here with my good friend, Michael Easton. Amazon best-selling author and founder of Fellowship Financial Group, a retirement income store located just outside of Orlando, Florida. Michael, thanks for sticking around. My pleasure, Dave. So what do you think, uh, we were talking about a little bit before the break and we had to close up really quick for the commercial, but what do you think really is it uh, personally, emotionally within someone that, I know you said trusting, um, but that allows them potentially to be victimized by some of these scammers? Well, I think I think what hap what has to happen is they do need to to question everything. Don't just because you think something seems secure, that doesn't necessarily mean it's secure. So, especially if you're getting online and doing transactions, well, you need to make sure that if you have to have a password, it's a fairly complex password that can't be hacked that easily. Also, if you're on a a website, you want to make sure that the website is secure, and that's pretty easy to do. You look in the top left-hand corner, if it says HTTPS, not just HTTP, the S stands for secure. That's a good thing. And then finally, you know, you want to make sure that if you're sending money somewhere, that you're using a, a, a trusted online payment process. Or like, for example, PayPal or Apple Wallet, all have been tried and, and tr tested and, uh, and, and have good ways to protect purchases for individuals and consumers. HTTPS. I just learned something from you. I didn't actually know that. Of course, I'm not very tech savvy, so, uh, so it's certainly worth the price of admission for me here. Uh, we have a minute and a half left then. You know, outside then of the realm of scams, given 
you know, what we saw the stock market do uh, just over the last few weeks, some real struggles with the coronavirus and other factors. What's the best advice you have for our viewers, income, income generation members? Uh, maybe not from getting scammed, but just from, from getting the raw end of the deal, if you will, with their investments and with their retirement strategies. Well, one of the things that we talk to our clients about quite a bit, I wrote about it in Common Sense Income Strategies as well, is just making sure that the money you need for income in retirement, that you're generating income from your investments. So you've got those assets allocated towards vehicles and, and the instruments that are designed to pay interest and dividends and uh, predictable income streams. If you've got that income covered from pensions and, and this type of income, and you still have discretionary assets, well, then you can take a little bit more risk if you're comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Or you can just generate more income and use the income for gifting to loved ones, for giving to your church or other charities, or, or just reinvesting to buy more shares. You know, uh, One thing, uh, I don't know about you, but the one thing I've never heard is a client complain that they had too much income, except for April 15th, maybe. So, Michael, thanks so much for being with us again on the show. I really appreciate you being back. Thank you.